Hi, folks. This is Mark Gregston with Parenting Today's Teens. And um, most people don't know I live at Heartlight. Heartlight's a residential counseling center where uh, I live with 60 high school kids that come from all over the country. And they come and live and spend a year with us. And, and so they're here right now, sequestered, isolated, uh, you know, shelter in place, and, and we kind of have a closed campus. And so uh, as my schedule has kind of backed up a little bit and stopped, I get to stay here with them, catch up on some things. And so we came up with this idea last week of saying, hey, why don't we write everybody on our email list and say, what are some questions that you have that I can answer? So I'm going to be trying to do this almost every day. And my uh, apologies are there for not uh, getting this to you earlier this week. I caught a cold and I was scared to death. I've got the coronavirus and and I don't have that, but this is pollen season in East Texas and it always does a number on me. And uh, so if I sound a little bit different or my eyes a little swelled up on one side, uh, I can't hear out of one ear. And so uh, I'm gonna stick with this just to make sure I answer some of your questions. We had such a response of people coming back, it was just absolutely amazing. I mean, hundreds of people are, are sending in these questions and I can spend the next 10 years answering one a day. And so, but I wanted to pick a couple of them out and um, just because I think they have a, a, a special place for what's happening in our world today of this coronavirus. And, and uh, it's important because we haven't seen it like this before. I mean, this is, uh, this is uh, historical. This is, this is the first time we've ever seen a pandemic spread like it has and impact everybody. It's not just the U.S. and it's not just where I live in Texas. It is the whole world is shut down. I flew from Shreveport, Louisiana to Dallas the other day and I was the only one on the plane. I got on another plane at DFW, the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, which was completely abandoned. It was a great place to be. Nobody else was around. Got on another plane, and there were two of us on the plane. I went to a small resort that we were invited to just to go spend some time uh, with a friend of mine, and, and, uh, and he and I were the only ones at the resort. I mean, so it is shut down everything everywhere. And, and, I, and I think it's important for everybody to realize that. If, if you are maybe feeling, and this was a lot of questions, that your child doesn't understand the importance of what's going on, you know what? I can hardly get my head around all of this. To me, it is somewhat amazing. I mean, the, just the craziness of, of, of the abandonment of grocery stores not having toilet paper, of people hoarding food, of, of not going to school. When have you heard of school being called off for the next couple of months or maybe for the rest of the year? When have you heard of camps not opening up or flights being canceled and people are being told, don't go anywhere else? Well, you know what? Your child can only internalize so much at a time. And I'm sure they're understanding a lot of it. But the number one thing that they're struggling with, I think, is their disconnect that they're having from their friends. Now, on top of that, I would, I would tell you that the greatest concern that I have, and I've never seen it before, are these seniors uh, who are missing out of the sports they've been involved in, or they can't go to prom, or, I mean, they're going to miss their graduations. I mean, to me, that is, I, I can't even believe it. And so somebody said, how are we supposed to respond to that? And I would tell you this, do something bigger for them. This is where you have to become creative. I would have a special graduation ceremony. I mean, we know this thing is going to pass. We know it's going to pass. And when it does, that, that may be the time that you do something different to celebrate the life of your senior. But also realize that giving up a sport, like not playing baseball or not playing softball or, or not have, being able to go play soccer or even gather. I mean, I have never heard of them canceling the Olympics. So anyway, so you just have to understand that it creates or just builds upon the anxiousness that they already feel. And this is what's happening is that a lot of people are very anxious about what's going on in the country today. A lot of uncertainty happening. But it's moving to another place where they're becoming very fearful. And I'm not, I'm not fearful of, of this thing. I'm, I'm a little anxious about it, but I'm not fearful. But what's happening is a lot of people are moving to a sense of panic. And when you, when you move to panic, now you start making poor decisions. So as a parent, let me encourage you in this. You can be anxious, it's okay, but don't move to fear. You know who controls this world. You know who you are. You know our destiny. 
you know that scripture that says all things will work together for good. And so it will. We'll get through this. We'll get through it. I promise that you will. And so you want to be an example of hope to your kids. You don't want to add to their anxiousness. You don't want to add to their fears. And I don't think you want to make them go panicky and go, you know, you, if you go into your child's room and there's like a thousand rolls of toilet paper, then you know that your child is panicking. That's, that's when you panic. Okay, let me get to another couple of these questions, and I wrote some of them down. You know, that, that uh, uh, and as you go through this and you spend time together, make sure that you're still, you know, doing everything that, that, um, that you're supposed to be doing, washing your hands and remaining the, the distance away from people, and don't make this thing bigger than it is. It's serious, and they'll catch on eventually, but they're trying to interpret all of it at the same time. So here's the first question. Uh, you know, my, my child is constantly on the phone when we're at home together. How do we connect? What are some ideas about how to spend time together? And many parents thought this would be a time to connect with their child, and they're finding it difficult or the relationship just isn't there. Okay, I've combined like four or five questions into one. But this is what's happening. Everybody's getting an understanding of what this social distancing is. It's what our teens have been living for the last 10 years. They have been so distance between each other that they're trying to connect all the time. And that's why you see kids always on their phone. I mean, they can't put it down. They can't stop. It's because they want to make that connection. And now we're getting to experience how they feel all the time. And so when they're picking up their phone, remember this. They're separated from their friends. They're told they can't hang out. You know, it's, it's not as much fun to FaceTime or be on Zoom as it is to be in the presence of your friends. And so you want them to, to connect with their friends. But I would suggest that you do this. If your child's always on the phone, won't get off, and won't stop, create some cell-free zones around your house. And these are just places that you go when you're at the dinner table. There's no cell phone here, which means you put up your cell phone as well. When we're watching a movie, it's a cell-free zone. There may be a Tuesday night that you say it's a no-tech Tuesday, but then you're going to come back and say, but we're going to have an all-tech Thursday. And I'll explain that just in, a, in just a little bit as I was writing down some things. But understand it's your way for your child to connect with other people. And there's something very healthy about that at a time that's unprecedented in this country where they're wanting to make sure that they maintain the relationships that they have. And here's your opportunity to build a relationship with your child that you've not had before, or maybe to deepen it to a level that has never gone there before, or maybe to show them what a real relationship is. So create some of those cell-free zones and say there's just certain places around the house you gotta put your phone up. It's okay to say, hey, at this time at night, we're gonna put the phone up. We're not gonna, we're not gonna be talking to everybody. It's okay. and and. A 12-year-old has got to have more restrictions than an 18-year-old who should have no restrictions because you should have done a good enough job <laughs> beforehand helping them get to a point where they realize how they need to put that up sometimes. That may be a lofty goal, but that sure is what we're hoping for. Now, here's some of the things that you can do while you're spending time with your child. I mean, pull out some old puzzles. It's amazing to me. We were in Walmart the other day, and all the jigsaw puzzles were gone. I mean, people are taking them home and saying, okay, let's do something other than video games. But you may want to do some video game challenges. Bring home or go buy. I mean, wear your gloves, wear your mask, don't touch anybody, don't let anybody sneeze on you, and buy a new game, bring it home, and say, we're going to master this game, and put a reward at the end of it. The, the, the point of it is spending time together. That, that what you're hoping on as you spend time together, that your child gets to see who you are, how you're responding to this world crisis, how you're dealing with things, and hopefully get a glimmer of wisdom from you in your speech and the way that you engage. Do this. Make a movie. Tell everyone in your, in your family, go take your phones, and within our house and on our property, you have to make a movie about something, and we're going to present it one night. Come up with new rules you know, for the time that you're sheltering in place. And it may be this, you get to sleep in on Saturdays. You get to, you know, if, you, if you'd go to church or you watch church on Sunday mornings, I mean, tell them that we're going to do church online, but we're going to expand your belt line by having these humongous cinnamon rolls afterwards. Make it where it's something that's fun and they enjoy it. Binge watch a TV series 
I mean, find some TV series. There's enough places to watch something on TV. Find something and say, we're going to watch it together. And if that means that you have to stay up till 4 o'clock in the morning because you can't turn the TV off because you're enjoying time with your kids, then do it because what you're doing is making a memory that they'll never forget. Zoom with friends and their friends. You know, uh, hire them to, to do some spring cleaning around the house. Let them do some of the work where you don't have to do it all the time. You know, and pay them for it. I mean, let them clean inside and out. It's spring. Take advantage of it. Have a, have a special dinner and get creative with food. You know, I mean, do something you haven't done before. Order some special food from somewhere. Get crab legs from Alaska. And then the next week, get... Perini's meat from, you know, Perini's meats down in outside of Abilene, Texas. Your kids will love it. Order pizza from Chicago and get it, get it shipped in. Do something different that just makes for a fun night and that they go, wait, you know, mom and dad are really trying to make this thing special. Do a story night. Say that, hey, this Wednesday night is going to be a story night. Everybody's got to tell their favorite story about your family where you laugh the most. And you just sit around. Okay, mom, dad, do this. <clears throat> when your child is telling a story, don't interrupt them. If they don't get it right, let them be wrong. It's okay. It doesn't have to be a perfect story. Don't ruin the punchline. Don't engage with them in such a way that you're shaming them. Let them have fun as they see it. Because what you're wanting to get a child to do is to learn how to express themselves in the presence of you. And if they'll do that by telling a story, then they'll do that when they are challenged by some other things in life where they need to, need to have your wisdom. Have a YouTube comedy night. Tell them to get on YouTube and find something funny. And everybody's got to you know, pull out their iPad and show each other that or and put it up on a screen, put it up on your TV. Um, some way for you guys to engage and learn to laugh. Work out together. I mean... You can run around the block. Have a push-up contest. Do something where you're saying, we're going to start doing push-ups and just see what happens. You know, uh, go on a diet together. You know, and it may be a, a pizza-a-day diet. That, that that means that you're going to be really big in about two or three months, but you're doing something very special that every day while you're in home, you're going to have a certain kind of pizza or some kind of food, and you try out something different. This is your time to engage. It's your time to spend time with your child, to learn more about your kids, to help them with school responsibilities. And know this, as you spend more time with your child, you'll learn more about them. You'll learn the good and bad. So talk about those things. You know, do this. I mentioned earlier about having a No Tech Tuesday. We'll have an All Tech Thursday where everybody brings their phone to the table and you ask them questions. You call them to the table, ding, 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 you know, and they, they come running down and then you have a prayer lined out on your on your phone, you send that, and it says, you know, amen, and then you, every, nobody can talk. Uh, everybody just, hey, can you pass the potatoes? Hey, pass the meat, pass the corn, whatever it is. But everybody's got to do it that way because you're engaged. You're just taking advantage of the very way they know how to talk. But you tell them you, you've got to answer every question that's thrown out there. And so you may want to say, how would you describe your week? How do you, how do you look at the coronavirus What's one thing that you would change about our family? And if you're bold enough, do this. Text everybody in your family and say, what's one thing that you would change about me? And just listen. Just listen. And what you're doing is creating an atmosphere where they can share with you their concerns without you correcting them, telling them where they're wrong or how they need to do it different. What, you are, what you're doing is, is really deepening the relationship. You know, and this stuff will pass soon, all the stuff we're dealing with, and what will come out on the other side of it is a deeper relationship with your child. So do this, do this. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Be concerned, but don't be afraid. And don't worry. Be aware, but don't worry. You know, a, a friend once told me that, that worry is misuse of your imagination. We're going to get through this. God's in control, I promise you. And so if you need more help on anything, uh, golly, you can get a hold of us in some way. Go to parentingtodaysteens.org and, and look up resources that are there. This could be a good time to read something. 
The other thing you can do if you're if you're finding that you're spending time at home and it's come it's turned into a crisis and you can't wait to get rid of your kid or get away from your child, come to a family in crisis conference that we have. We'll have those in June. We had to cancel the one in April. But God bless you as you spend time with your child. And my prayer for you is going to be that God will use this opportunity of spending time together to strengthen your relationship so that it so that five years from now you will look back at this time and laugh about what a great time you guys had together, how deep it was for you all, and how you really blessed one another through this relationship called family. Hey, talk to you soon. I'll get back on and answer more questions later.